This is an ocean, but you probably already knew that. The reason there's an ocean on your screen right now is because an ocean is made up of a huge amount of water, which is a liquid. And another thing that is a liquid are CSGO items. Masterfully crafted intro aside, let's talk about some CSGO items that are liquids and that are going to trade very easily, because this is something that was requested on Twitter, and I think it's a really good video idea, so that's why it's here in front of you today. I actually think this is a really interesting topic, and it's going to give people a good idea of what items are the best to trade, so it's going to apply to those really advanced traders and also those not-so-advanced traders to kind of help them get started. Anyway, before this video gets started, let's go ahead and take a look at Skinport.com. Skinport's a great site to use to buy all of your items that you want for your CSGO go inventory whether you're investing or trading it's going to be an awesome site to use because it has a really great and easy to use ui it also has a huge amount of items in stock and a variety of payment methods both for withdrawing and depositing so it's a great site to use be sure to check them out and use the link in the description below to support the channel directly thank you guys so much for checking out skinport and let's get started with this video so the twitter comment says to start from high tier and go to low tier but i'm actually going to do it the opposite way because i think it's a little bit more obvious to go from low tier to high tier it might make a little bit better of a video organization so starting off with a low tier area we have some items that are going to be great for trading so low tier I'm gonna go ahead and say is just under $50 obviously the big one is going to be liquid items so for example there's going to be red lines and op Asimovs the main goal with liquid items is to take advantage of the demand they have because people are going to want those items in a very high quantity because they are going to either be using them for higher trades to break them down or just because they move easily and are able to be traded in built-up quantities so for example if someone is able to collect a bunch of AK red lines, they're able to use those as sort of a fiat currency, if you will, for some other type of item. Obviously, it's not technically a fiat currency because fiat currencies are technically paper money, but you kind of get the point. They function the same way. The main goal here with these items is to try and collect as many of them as you can and then find someone looking for high demand liquid items like the red lines or the op Asimovs and then go ahead and try to take a small margin on them as they will trade very quickly. So even though you're making a small margin on every trade just because people are really interested in getting those items because they're such high demands, there is still going to be a very fast trade environment that you're going to be putting yourself in, which is going to counterbalance the low profit margins you're making on each trade. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about how actually trading these works. I do have a lot of other videos that are based around trading methods specifically and how to trade, but this is basically just going to be talking about the items themselves and why they fit into different trading methods. Those are going to be the main two for liquid items, so red lines and op Asimovs. However, there are some other options that are still very liquid and very high demand, just not not so much as the red line or the op Asimov. This includes stuff like the M4A4 Desolate Space, the M4A4 Dragon King, different really popular play skins that people use in a very high amount. My recommendation for you if you're in this bracket is to look for those red lines and op Asimovs, but if they become unprofitable at some point, then just look for some of those other items that are a little bit less known and you might be able to make some good profit margins on those just because they aren't as popular as the AK red line and op Asimov. Now the next part of this low tier section is going to be dedicated to souvenir items. I don't about souvenir items in a recent video as well, but souvenir items are basically going to be a really good option for low tier trading as well, because these souvenir items are going to be able to be bought on snipe prices from a lot of different websites. So if you just stock the websites and look for these items, you can actually find them very, very cheap actually for market price, and a lot of them are actually really nice collector's items, which a lot of collectors will pay a premium for. The main difference between these items and the Redline and the Op Asimov is that these items are going to trade a lot more slowly, but they are going to have much larger margins because you're able to get them at very low prices and sell them for pretty high prices. So even though the margins are better, they're going to trade a lot more slowly. The main souvenir items to look out for in this low tier bracket are going to be some nice Cato 15s and there's also some Cato 14s that you can get for pretty good prices as well. You just have to look around and find the right items. This method takes a long time and it is pretty hard to actually find people that want these items. However, there is really good margins on each item that you buy, so it kind of just depends on how long you're willing to wait. Keep in mind when it comes to collectors, stickers and the sticker positioning is very important so the main stickers you're looking out for are very popular player signatures. So for example, Shroud and Olaf Meister, Dick Stacy, anybody who has a really popular signature is going to have a higher value to collectors. That's actually going to wrap it up for the low tier bracket. Although it seems like a low amount of items, it's actually a huge amount of profit to be made and a really good margin to put yourself in if you want to trade in this cheaper tier. It's actually a really good spot to do stuff. Now I also want to mention when an item becomes a liquid that's from a different game. So for example, recently we had the Dota 2 Arcanas that were liquid items for CSGO trading. If that kind of happens in the future at some point, as it did in full swing with Arcanas, then that would definitely be a really good item to trade as well in the low tier brackets, if they are, of course, cheap like Arcanas were. 
So keep that in mind as well. Moving on to the mid tier, we have probably the best profit method in CSGO trading, in my personal opinion, and this is going to be knife flipping. This is not really that known by a lot of people, and I actually think it has huge profit margin potentials, so definitely try it out. So basically, you're going to want to buy the cheapest knives available, like really bottom of the barrel, really bad knives that most people would consider bad knives at least, like for example, the gut knife Boreal Forests, and the flip knives, the really low tier flip knives, and the Navaha knives even, even though those ones are going to be a little bit worse, they're still an option. And basically just buy the lowest tier knives you can possibly get. Now you may be thinking to yourself, why would I want to add a low tier knife to my inventory? They look much worse than high tier knives and are really just bad in general compared to the grand scheme of knives. Why would I want to add the low tier ones to my inventory? Well, that's why I'm here and that's why you should subscribe to my channel. Please go ahead and click that subscribe button and also click the like. The main reason this is a good profit method is because there's a lot of people out there that are looking to trade up all of their low tier or mid tier items into a low tier knife just because it's a knife itself and they want to own a knife. It doesn't matter if it's a low tier knife, they just want to own a knife. So the really good area to buy into is those really low tier knives because a lot of people are looking to just barely scrape by and have enough of those knives. Another nice thing is that they don't really mind overpaying because they are just looking simply for a knife. So even if the knife they're getting is going to be a bit of overpay on their part, it's still going to be a good deal for them because they end up getting the knife. So that's why it's kind of a good area to trade in. And there's a lot of people looking to do this sort of trade and you can find them all over the trading community. I found a lot of them as I've been a trader and really I haven't done this knife flipping method personally a lot, but I have seen people do it a whole ton and it does look pretty profitable. Another cool thing about this method is that they are going to be trading up really high demand items, really high demand play skin items specifically, because the people looking to get a knife are usually going to have a nice set of low tier play skin items anyway, just because that's kind of the same type of people that are going to be trading up for a knife just because they want a knife. If you're looking to spend the kind of money that's in that sort of later tier of the mid tier bracket, there's also the option of buying really high tier knives with really low tier skins or really low tier knives with really high tier skins. So for example, Karamba Boreal Forests, or for example, a really low tier Tiger Tooth knife, like a gut knife Tiger Tooth. And basically, if you buy these items, it's also going to have the same sort of effect. People want a really high tier knife, but don't really care about the skin, or wants a really high tier skin, but don't really care about the knife, just because it has sort of a title around it, this sort of legendary status in the CSGO community. The logic behind it is people don't really care if they have a Falchion knife fade because they have a fade knife, or they don't really care if they have a Boreal Forest Karambit because they have a Karambit. People that are willing to do this are all over, just like the previous part of this mid-tier section, and there's also going to be a lot of people looking to overpay for these items just because they are the skin or the knife that they want really badly. So it's basically going to be the same thing as I just talked about, but it's going to be with different items. So yeah, this method isn't really talked about a lot, and it also is really kind of done in a low sort of niche area. So if you guys want to go ahead and break into this area, I think it is a good one to look out for right now, especially in the trading community. Overall, this is really going to be probably the best profit method for the mid-tier area, but if you wanted to, for example, extend your liquid trading that you're doing in low tier up to mid tier you could also just upgrade the item by getting like a stat track op asimov or a stat track nice minimal wear ak redline which is going to push you into that mid tier price range but it's still going to be really nice liquid items the only other thing i really want to mention from this mid tier area is really nice mid tier knives like for example a bayonet tiger tooth something that's not super expensive but also not cheap something that a lot of people do once really badly because it's a really good looking knife a really solid one and they are willing to overpay for it so stuff like a bayonet Tiger Tooth, Bayonet Black Lambs, anything that people really do hold in high regard that is still going to be in that mid-tier area. Those are good items to trade as well. They are pretty liquid, they go fast, and there's a lot of people looking to buy them. I don't personally think this is better than doing the knife flipping method, but I still think it's good and it's something to look out for if you're in this mid-tier range. And finally, that brings us to the high tier range of items that you should trade. These are going to be pretty expansive, but it's really going to just kind of revolve around liquids. These trade really fast and really nicely and are going to give you pretty good profit margins if you know what you're doing. This is mainly going to concern those really nice high tier liquid items, like for example, the M44 Howl or the Glock Fade or Karambit Fade. Anything that has a very, very high regard and high legendary status in the CSGO community is going to be an item that people trade very often and uses liquids for even bigger trades with really nice items like sapphires and stuff like that. As a plus, these items are really good for investing as well because they have a lot of market movement as they are high demand, high tier items, and they also sell at very high prices, which makes them very hard to obtain and also very rare. You can also extend the souvenir method from the low tier area all the way up to the high tier area as well because there's a lot of high tier souvenirs on top of that. For example, those op pink DD pads that are really high tier, the Olaf pass stuff, 
just anything that is really high tier and a souvenir. There's a lot of different options out there and you kind of just have to do your own independent research in that field, but it is possible to do that souvenir method from the low tier area of this video, also in high tier. Other than that, there's pretty much only two other things I want to talk about for items in the high tier trading area. These are going to be number one, Caddo items like Caddo 14 items that have really nice stickers like Iba Power Hollows, and the second one is going to be some really nice blue gem items. I'm not a blue gem guy myself, so I don't really want to talk about them too much in detail and fear of getting something wrong, but if you guys want to go ahead and do some research on that, there's actually a good friend of mine who also has a nice blue gem research website online that you can go ahead and look at all the really high tier patterns and kind of look at some of the price histories as well. I am not sponsored by this, but I will leave a link below to it if you want to go ahead and check it out. Unlike blue gems though, I am pretty experienced with Caddo items and I've done them a lot myself. So one of the main things I would recommend with these is not trading for them, but rather buying them yourself and then trading them to other people. There's a lot of ways to do this and a lot of different websites that have nice Caddos on them. Basically, it's just going to be up to you to find those on different websites for good prices. If you want to go ahead and do a nice little price checking guide, I do have one on my channel already, but you're going to have to kind of figure out what each item is worth based on its own individual value, which you can do by a variety of methods, which I'll probably make a more in-depth guide on in the future. However, if you want to kind of figure out how much these are worth, kind of just stick around in the trading community, figure out how much they're worth based on how much people are looking for on them, and then kind of just get a good idea there. Another option is finding the individual item that you might be interested in buying and then getting a price check on it. And if it is a good item to buy and you are going to make good profit on it, then go ahead and pick it up. You can do the price checking in a variety of places, but one of the best ones I would recommend is actually my server, my Discord server. So if you want to go ahead and join that, be sure to go to the description below. We just reformed our price check section and it looks really nice. Anyway, main thing here, buy the item on a site like Buff for a good snipe price on the Caddo item and then go ahead and take that item and trade it to somebody else for a nice margin based on on how much you sniped it for. Then if you want, you can take the profit you got, put it back into sniping Caddo's, and then repeat. If that's a good option for you, then so be it. You can do Caddo trading in all different tiers of inventory value, however I would recommend doing it in the highest tier because those are the ones that are going to have the highest demand and are going to be the nicest looking ones when they're sitting in your inventory. Anyway, that about does it for this video. Thank you guys so much for checking it out, and thank you for checking out my channel. I really appreciate it. If you guys want to go ahead and hit that subscribe button for the best and fastest investing and trading tips anywhere else on YouTube, be sure to click that subscribe button right now. Also be sure to check that like button out if you want to go ahead and help my videos out with the YouTube algorithm and get me out there. And if you also want to go ahead and help me out, you can leave me a comment and give me some constructive criticism on what I can improve on. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Skimports, my Discord, and my Twitter using the links in the description below. See y'all next time. Peace.